Coffee. Bear. Coffee. B E C O B A. Oh, <gasps> what? No. No. What? Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, <gasps> what? You went into the attic? <gasps> I'm very disappointed and terrified. Why don't you bring this potato? That's pretty bad. Mom, you're always trying to give me potatoes. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. Why do birds suddenly appear over there, over here? Eight spices. Oh, some must be doubles. Or a gun. Oh, what the hell? Oh no, not Lenny! Not Lenny! Kids, turn off the TV. I have some bad news about Lenny. Not Lenny! Live from the epicenter of independent cinema, it's Film Stuffs! With your host, Jake S. Weissman! Tonight's guest, writer, director, producer, Christian Gridelli! With me, the original Great Caesar's Ghost, Jack Quint! Let's start the show! What's happening, film film dorks? Let me tell you something. My boy Jack today, my boy Jack is off writing music on a flaming pie, so I'm I'm running the control solo. <laughs> if you couldn't tell already, I'm Jake S. Weissman. Thanks for joining us today. I'm so excited. Today I got my buddy Christian Gridelli. If any day for uh, Jack to not be able to be here, what a great day, because me and Christian can talk for hours and hours and hours and hours. I've known him longer than almost anybody in Chicago. So we have lots and lots to talk about. He has also made uh, some of the biggest budget, greatest casted uh, work that I've ever been a part of and actually seen. So uh, I will bring him out in just a moment. As far as the news goes this week, yes, there's a couple of big things, but the news actually kind of hit close, uh, close to home today, uh, uh, this week. Mom, Hello, I love you very much. Like I said, I'm running the uh, I'm running the board today, so I'll be all over the place. Uh, please follow, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, what is the news? The news right now. I posted uh, a 420 double feature ad on my Facebook, saying, "Hey, watch Scrapers, my movie. Watch Break, Luke Taylor's movie. Luke Taylor, who is my guest on the first episode." I then went to Amazon to double check because it's free on Prime to stream. And I noticed my movie wasn't free on Stream. Free on Stream to Prime. It was not free on Prime to stream. Uh, you can still buy it. I'm going to have to adjust the, uh, the prices, but uh, I, I wrote them a letter. <laughs> Thank you, Bones. Love ya. Um, I wrote them a letter uh, a few days ago saying, hey, what, what's the deal? I, I know you as Amazon are not going to be allowing short films anymore to be uploaded from just anybody and documentaries anymore. It's just too much, uh, too much surus, as it were. It's too much bullshit to deal with. So they just stopped doing it altogether. My film Scrapers is a feature film and it's, fictional. It's a narrative fiction film. So I wrote them. I said, what's the deal? I uh, Can you please stream my movie? And they wrote me back. And I was going to put up here what they wrote me back. Um, I still have to write them back. Oh, but I got to take off this guy. And then we'll bring Christian on just to see what he has to say about it. Because uh, I know this as an independent filmmaker, this impacts him. So this is from Amazon. It says, hello, since this title has been live on Prime Video, has not compiled enough total hours, unique customer streams, and or a high enough completion rate. As a result, Prime offers have been removed from the catalog. Prime Video performs regular reviews using customer signals and viewing behavior to determine which titles are resonating with customers and titles that underperform or fail to meet our engagement standards may be subject to removal and other discretionary uh, decisions regarding the composition of the catalog may be made at any time. 
Uh, for more information on our licensing, here's this, all titles submitted through Prime Video Direct are licensed at the sole discretion of Amazon. All review uh, decisions are final, and this title may not be resubmitted or appealed. Uh, it's a bummer, man. That's a bummer. Um, I, you know, I'll bring Christian on because there's this one side that's very kind of bummed out about that. And also the other side that's saying they gave me three or four years and I couldn't get the numbers. So Christian Gridelli, my sweet, sweet Christian Gridelli. <laughs> hey buddy. How you doing guy? I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for letting me rant on for a second there. Oh, I love it. I, I, I was going to try and check our own movie that's on Amazon Prime while we were while you we were doing your thing. And I was like, I don't have time. I'm just going to look like a putz when I come back up. So well, that's good TV. So if you want to check it at any point, maybe when we're watching uh, the No Better Lot, it's three minutes, uh, a trailer. I got a couple of go. trailers of yours. You can see if your movie is still streaming or not. And we can play this go. in real time. Um, yeah, we'll find out. I mean, we'll it's kind of <laughs> I mean, the conversations that I've been having lately. Hey, zombie banana spiders. This is Bones' oh, wow. podcast with her sister Heather. And oh, Colin. awesome. It's very, very good. It's about uh, horror and just every single, like, oh my gosh, every facet of horror you can imagine. Zombie, zombie, zombie. banana spiders. I can't talk today. My lips, I'm tripping over my lips. You're doing a lot of stuff. Let me just also <laughs> point out for folks that have watched maybe the other episodes that Jack was hosting, there's a lot of things going on. You got this ticker on the bottom, <laughs> little things are beeping and booping up. I think Thanks, you're doing pal. a great job, man. You're I handling a lot. You. Thanks, yeah. sweetheart. It'll See, that's why I like having you around because you're just you. positive. Um, so yeah, this is it, it, that's the question right now is, you know, it's it's a feels like a real step back as an independent filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, for years now, at least five years, they've offered this opportunity for independent filmmakers. As long as you have closed captioning, as long as you fit the right specifications, we will distribute and stream your film and let people, yeah. people have watched our movies in the UK, have watched our movies all across America. Um, and now they're saying, you know, not enough people watched it. So... You know, <laughs> I, it's just, I mean, it's a bummer for, like you said, I, I think there's two sides of the coin. Like you said, it's like, well, maybe we should have been hustling more and getting more eyeballs on it, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that's, that's on us as the creators, but also, you know, we're the creators and I think begrudgingly we have to be marketing and we have to be all these other things that, you know, number one, nobody tells you in the like fantasy of filmmaking. I feel like at least when we were coming up, I don't think that stuff was ever stressed, uh, especially as much as it is now. I mean, social media is a whole other thing, like not even right. bringing that into account, right? But it's just such a bummer that then we had found a way that was like, oh, we do have a way. And maybe they somebody actually does give a spit about this this thing now. I can, I can upload it and people can see it and, and this right. is great. And every time you try and find that little like, you know, somebody held the door open for you. So you're like, oh, thank you. I'm coming in. No, no, no. You got to go back outside. Right. And it, I'm sitting just, here. Oh, sorry. Keep going. No, no, no. I was just going to say it's can. It's very consistent with just how quickly the landscape changes for all this stuff. And it honestly, like. That's fair. Making stuff is not the easy part, but it's the easy part compared to trying to keep up with how to get people to watch your stuff. Thanks um, for saying that. Yeah, and it's terrifying. I don't think I, filmmakers understand that whatsoever, especially people on our level where, you know, when you learn, I don't know at what point in the process a lot of people learn like, oh, at the end of this, it's going to be me with a movie under my arm. Yeah. In, unless I get like a team to actually give a crap, which is, yep. I was talking to Bones earlier, like the movies, not only are there more independent films, but their budgets are higher. Mm -hmm. And they're getting rejected as though they only spent the 10 grand that like I spent on scrapers, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, origins uh, had a pretty substantial budget. No. Yeah. We were, I mean, I, I can say it like we're not, <laughs> no one's buying the movie, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> we put it out ourselves. We're going to put the trailer up. Uh, after we are going to watch the trailer. For it. Second. Yeah. But oh, yeah, me. I'm happy yeah. to like speaking openly and honestly, because I, I also think it's ridiculous that independent filmmakers hide their budgets. Um, sure. it, it's really silly. It's very educational to hear. So Origins was, we, we shot it all. 
um, for like just under a hundred thousand, which is an insane amount of money. Like I never in a million years would have thought we would get that to make this movie. And we, we raised it on our own with, you know, kind of going hat in hand to friends and family. And we did a Kickstarter thing when that was still popping, um, which I would never do again. (laughs) <laughs> which we could talk about later if we want. Yeah. Um, I think anybody that's crowdfunded anything is like, oh yeah, that was fine for once, but now, no, no, no. Yeah, um, it seems like everybody got one. Yeah, and, and then I think at the end of it, after post and everything, we maybe landed around like 115 or something, right? So still a shit ton of money and like, you know, just kind of feeling like constantly somebody was about to like pull that away from us. Sure. Um, but we, but we wrote an insane thing that we shouldn't have written for our first thing where it was like, okay, how many speaking parts are there? Okay. 40. Good job guys. Great. Let's do that. And then uh, how many locations are there? A ton. Okay. Great. Good idea. Guys. Did anything like accelerate that? Did anything encourage that? Like, yeah. Um, And part of it was, and when I say, I keep saying we, I forget that we're actually talking to other people. Um, (laughs) We, as Dime yeah. Store Films is me and my collaborator and co-writer, co-director, Hunter Norris, um, who we've been doing stuff together for over like 15 years or something. Um, right. Him and I writing and, and shooting and kind of started as scrappy two-man band kind of stuff, doing everything, shooting it and then cutting it and acting in it. Um, was it probably a mistake? Uh, but yeah, so this was like our big step up, right? We, we had made a bunch of shorts. Now it's the time to make a feature. This is what big kids do. Um, so we did that. And I think part of it was us trying to be like, okay, well, what are some of the hallmarks of a first feature? Um, and a lot of that was like, okay, it's inside somebody's apartment or it's minimal, minimal cast, minimal locations. And I'm not saying there's they're not a way to do that well. Um, right. Plenty of people have done that well. Your your films do that so well, and you have this like alchemy with that stuff that I just like can't put my That's hands there, on. So yeah, sick. no, it's totally true. Um, so yeah, we wrote a bunch of locations, we wrote a, wrote a bunch of actors. Everybody we worked with was amazing. We we got through it by the skin of our teeth. You know, we didn't get rained out of any locations because there were no backups. You know, just not the way you really want to be doing stuff. Um, but we did it. And it, you know, it worked. We got a finished movie. Uh, we did some festivals. We won a couple things. It might be on Amazon for you to watch for free. Maybe well, not. Let's watch the trailer to Origins yeah. of Wit and Humor. Sure. And, uh, sure. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll see you on the other side. Here. Buster Keaton said, drama is a close-up, comedy is a white shot. That's a close-up. Comedy is a white shot. I don't love you anymore. Okay, so we try that. God, he hits my dick. Awkward. Stop that, you look like a pedophile. Nervous. I'm just a a, a guy trying to live with this condition, okay? Like like the elephant man. Self-doubting. Whose fantasy is this, Howard Hughes? We are all insecure children, and that's why we do this job. This, this elixir, tonic, time, experience, jazz, sweat, it's all gooch. You get drunk and then the girls find you irresistibly funny. <laughs> and you drank it! <laughs> get a disease, because that's not my fault. And then all of a sudden I turn into Charlie Chaplin and I'm slipping and I'm sliding and this guy is like, I'm like look, I got mugged. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what this is about anymore. You know, it's not about Deb. Come on, Les, you're better than this. People usually laugh at things they've heard before. Ow! You're a funny guy. It's like I don't even have that anymore. That's like subtle with a hint of like, like subtle with a hint. So what is the problem? Sex and free food. Mm. 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 There's more to life than you and your problems. But I'm here for you. And the hot dog, but mostly for you. Who the fuck is Les Candelero? I am. Maybe. Maybe. I was just going to say, I'm going to do a little Back to the Future there. 
Um, wow, Super Troopers and and Joe Hersley from Accepted, and you know what? Oh, I keep meaning to tell you. I don't me. know if you know this. Uh, Joe Hersley is in Daniel Bregoli or Bad Baby's music video. Oh so yes, yes. As she is like, they're showing her clips on Doctor Phil like YouTube clips, but Joe Hersley's face keeps popping up. It's a joy. I'm so happy for him. The the best dude <laughs> in the world. And like got so lucky to get him and get Steve and get all the people we had. Like I, I really can't stress enough how lucky and like fortunate we were to get like the people that were there for the love of the game and it just everybody. Like it was, you know, whatever. It's all collaborative. You know these things. Of course. But I had the pleasure. It never of, does uh... that feel more um more true than when you're like doing your first big thing and you're just like okay well i guess now we're in charge of 40 people let's do it <laughs> you guys you were, were there. very much in charge yeah i had the pleasure of being around in the periphery getting to check great. things out i uh, want to have you on every set that i ever have so it's, it's always a pleasure <laughs> as long as i don't have to pa anymore i can't my body no, can't no, handle no. it anymore i can't nah, be man. Trash. <laughs> no you can't be setting up shares come on now Talk about need chairs. Right they need chairs lock need it up you know, <laughs> we can't have any cars on this side. Go find these people in their apartments and tell them to move their cars. That never happened. I was just yeah. going to say, we didn't do that. <laughs> no, it's just, I think. I was like, I have, it, I have the record show that if that came from <laughs> us, it didn't come from us. No, that's some uh, Scott Rudin shit right there. <laughs> no, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> Pulling out of five A24 uh, movie productions all at once. <laughs> um. I feel like I was going somewhere with that. You'll probably have to keep me on track too. Oh, but, that's fine. Um, yeah. I, so I don't know. You know, we made we made the feature, and we for our distribution, kind of looping back to the Amazon thing. Yeah. Um, there is a site called Quiver Digital, um, okay. and that's who we use. They're they're pretty indie friendly, or at least at the time they were super indie friendly, and essentially they kind of act as a middleman where you upload the specific file type and all this other good stuff about the movie. And then it's their job to shoot it out to Amazon prime, shoot it out, pitch it to Netflix, pitch it to Hulu for you. Um, who can give you a thumbs up or thumbs so down. So you got pitched to Hulu and yeah, but both thumbs down by the way. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, gonna do? But you know, they'll throw it on all these other streaming sites for you. And sure. it's just, there's a one-stop shop for doing all that stuff. You do pay kind of like a maintenance fee yearly to keep everything going and, all that stuff, but it's not a bad avenue if you are trying to get out to, especially now that Amazon is shutting this stuff down, it seems like. Well, yeah. It, you know, yeah. It, it's a good way to get stuff out there. It's definitely easier if you have some sort of a team behind you or some sort yeah. of like, I feel like if Quiver does business with Prime, it's kind of better. There's probably more content than like Jake S. Weissman and his one movie on Prime. So. I, I, yeah, I, I feel you. And it's also like, I, I think a lot of the things you're looking for in distribution is you want somebody that already has like their foot wedged in the door so they can't close it. So they're just like, I brought my friend. Is it okay if he comes? He's cool. He's cool. Right. He'll just hang out. He's just going to sit on the couch and hang out. <laughs> that's like, okay, great. So that's what Quiver was for us, you know. Um, yeah. Otherwise, like, you know, we don't, we don't know shit from anything. So <laughs> what were we going to do with it? You right. know? That's the big question right now after all of this uh, Amazon stuff for me is, I mean, I was reminded by my lovely bones uh, that lovely bones. Oh, spooky. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, the second that came out of my mouth, I was like, I, that's never going to be her nickname. No, no, um, no. You can't, you can't stand the like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, beautiful book like the woman, but I never going to call her that ever again. Uh, bones. Oh, thanks buddy. Now I don't have any train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's, it's my fault. <laughs> you were talking about what bones reminded you of when we were talking about Amazon distribution. Oh, that it's and... not every movie. Like, yes, oh. it's this movie. I can't <laughs> resubmit this movie, but I've now I'm like, well, I was going to spend all this money to do closed captioning for clean sheets and put that on prime. And now I'm kind of like, do I even want to do that? Yeah. But I don't know what the other options are. Also, a couple of people have come to me saying, you know, uh, just throw it on YouTube. And I might, I might, um, yeah. but I don't think that 
going head first into another conglomeration the same way that I went head first into prime being like Jeff Bezos cares about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that this like really an independent film. Uh, they don't care about independent artists. Are you kidding me? Jeff Bezos took off his glove <laughs> and he, he reached down, he touched your hand. He was like, come with me, Jake. Come with me. I'm going to save you from for independent film. This says the man who gets upset that a worker has peed in a bottle and has slowed down proximity. <laughs> He's the guy that's going to save indie film, you know? I know. It's like, you mean I cost you more money than I'm making you? And you have the balls to kick me off your platform? Get okay. out of here. How dare you, sir? How dare you? <laughs> so it's, 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 I'm right down the middle where I'm like, well, damn. But also, like, well, damn, like, I can't, I'm, I can't expect so much from Amazon, like you said, that if you're pissing in bottles, like, they'll, they'll help me as much as I'll help them. And then when I prove that I can't really do much for them, yeah, totally. that's rough. That being said, uh, I, it is this thing where I'm like, do I have to change my pricing down to like 25 cents or like 99 cents? And then it feels yeah. like I move my movie to the, to the bin. Yeah, you know yeah, we're in the we're in that uh, <laughs> Menards bin. <laughs> That's how that I feel. Have, yep. That's how I feel. Where it's like, I oh, feel. if I genuinely change this to ninety nine cents, then like, I'm I'm blockbuster buy three for <laughs> three for three. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to get him out the door <laughs> just like well that and that's kind of what it feels like I, I i don't know if i already said this on on air um but you know the streaming was it if it, if our film is included in a membership then sure it's kind of free why not if the rating is okay if whatever they say yeah. why not give it a shot to ask anyone to spend even a quarter like to ask them to spend any kind of money on on a movie where like they don't know who I am from Adam and there's more of me out there with my with other, you know, $10,000 movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How is this going to work? Um it's such a it's such a tricky position to be in because like to your point it's like okay, the goal is eyeballs, right? It's always get eyeballs. It, it's not I don't think we're naive enough in saying like would it be great to make back our budget and, and you, you know get everyone money back and all that good stuff? It's like yes, of course, that's always the goal. But like, I don't know that we're naive enough. Like you were saying, like, do you, will you take a chance? Like, would you, as a guy who watches a ton of movies, are you out there ready to drop ten bucks on, you know, just something that you just kind of came across? I mean, that's I. I it's amazing. I, I don't know that I am. You know, no. and and. You know, I don't know if that's like embarrassing or something, but it just feels like that's the truth. Unless you know? it calls so, to you, right? Because we talk yeah. about you and I saw Silvio and we yeah, went two facets to see trying to point Silvio. to it. There you go. <laughs> Silvio is a wonderful movie. Uh, and that's super indie. They couldn't have spent more than $20,000 on that film. We were lucky enough to see it at facets off of Fullerton in yeah. the smallest theater. Like it was like a closet and there were so few people there. And I was late that when the movie was done, the guy running projection was like, you want me to watch, you want to watch the first 15 minutes again? And we're like, I we're going to go get, we're gonna get some tacos. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go see 2001. We're going to go watch an awful Q and a at the music box. <laughs> It's kind of our brand, yeah. Oh my god! Uh, aside from aside from accidentally watching the gayest movies, but that's besides the point. I was thinking about that that's earlier. Well, we want to watch good movies, so we watch yeah. Velvet Underground or uh, Velvet Goldmine. We're like, this is okay, excellent, and then uh, uh, Nightmare Two, Nightmare on Elm Street Nightmare Two, which, which gets uh, better just, every time I watch it. To be honest, like great that, stuff. He's, Oh, it transcends every time I watch it. It just like goes to another level. I'm like, you know what? Shame on people for ragging on this movie. Uh, but uh, you know, that's that's old news. There's old. Right. There's a great documentary about um, uh, Nightmare Two and the star of Nightmare Two. How he that's got cool. really done dirty by yeah. the press and things about that, um, saying that whatever they had made a gay Nightmare on Elm Street, like that's some awful thing, you know, it, which is so silly. But anyway, it's it's a very lovely documentary. It's called um, Scream Queen. Nice. And yeah, it, it just really talks about that the actor's kind of journey and what he had to deal with from the fallout from that stuff. And 
yeah it's that lovely. sounds great yeah i um i love we watched all those movies together yeah um team it's band snatch all the way uh, yeah it's my that's fave. pretty good stuff um <laughs> uh christian i would like to play um this trailer for your audio play sure. audio yeah do you want me to tee it up a little bit yeah and and i'm gonna just apologize up front because it's a little tiny it's the little screen here so uh, we'll we'll make this work here but, yeah we'll uh, make it please, work please tee us up uh and yeah and then we'll talk about it a little bit so what you're gonna what you're about to hear um <laughs> is a project uh hunter and i wrote called no better lot and we wrote it um pretty shortly after origins had wrapped we were just like kind of feeling juiced from that so we were like okay let's let's write something quick and let's write something kind of i was dying to write something kind of lynchy and um surreal david lynchy that kind of vibe um so we wrote no better lot and uh it's this kind of like surreal noir is what we call it so it's like a detective story uh that's set in hell um so there's a lot of weird stuff and intrigue it's a little bit horror um it's a little bit comedy because we don't really know how to not write people like making jokes. Um, but quickly realize like, Hey, we are not going to have the money to, this is like a million dollar, multi-million dollar movie. Nobody is giving us that money. Um, so it just kind of sat for a long time and we liked the script enough that years later we came back to it and was like, okay, well, how do we adapt this and make this like a radio play? Um, so yeah, that's that's what we did. We kind of went back into the script and turned the action blocks into um, the narrator. Um, so we kind of got to do a lot of visual description that way and punch those up a little bit. And we cast actors for it. We recorded it in a studio, sound design it, score it. So we basically tried to make like a somewhere between like a movie for your ears and um, like a uh, embellished audio book, I guess. Wonderful. Well, let's so, uh, let's give it a check out, shall we? Take a little listen. On a dirt road outside of town, under the cover of darkness, a man's body floats above the ground. His eyes flutter and dart around. He hears snippets of a conversation around him. Multiple voices speaking in harsh, hushed tones, but he can't quite make sense of them. His eyes blink shut. The world goes black. Do it! Elmer tugs the other end of the rope, slowly peeling Guy's body from the ground. The adrenaline douses whatever Mickey he's been slipped and he snaps into consciousness. Wait, 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 wait! Whoever he's working for might come asking around. Think he's a company man? Had that smell about him. Shit, they'll turn this place into a crater if they come looking. This whole job would be done right now if I could just throw around the weight of the company just a little- Are you hearing yourself talk to me? Because if you were, then I wouldn't have to remind you how important it is to look like it's contained or what a liability it would be if people knew we weren't in control of the situation. It's better they think we don't know than we don't know how to stop it. So act like you know what the fuck you are doing. <laughs> Guy snaps to life, wriggling like a fish in a line. The rope hasn't killed him, but he's stuck there, his hands bound behind him. His struggling shakes the limbs, sending an explosion of energy right down to the roots. The other bodies begin to wake. Some wail, some thrash. Some are still content with their sentence. Man on a mission, huh? <laughs> Can't remember the last time we saw that. <laughs> Who sent you to do something that stupid? You one of the misters, boys? Misters got fingers in everything. She turns her attention to Guy, dabbing the blood off her face like a genteel southern belle. <laughs> they really picked the wrong man for the job, didn't they, sweetie? Let's talk about you. Why are you here? You don't seem like you got what it takes to be bad, but you don't seem like you got what it takes to be good, neither. So here's what I get out of this. I get out of this. When your job is done here and you leave this little latrine on the prairie, you take me with you. The clock is ticking now, and the rot in his wounds is piling up, the pain magnifying, 
It might be time to try something drastic before it's too late. No Better Lot. A Surreal Noir by Dime Store Films. It's pretty juicy. It's pretty juicy, right? I don't know. It, it's it's still one of my favorite things that I think we've written uh, thus far. So yeah, it's now in its own feed too. We kind of um, this uh, great website called modernhorrors.com who does horror reviews and all this great horror stuff that you can get into if you want to nerd out on that stuff with me or with Modern both apparently. Horrors. Yeah, and so they uh, distributed it with us. That's oh, not right. Just, no, you got it though. Don't worry about the modernhorrors.com. Are you sure it's not horrors? It could be. Maybe they changed okay. it. Maybe they pulled an Amazon switcheroo. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. To, I want people to watch your stuff, man. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the nice thing is now it's in its own feed. So just search. What is going on? <laughs> just search <laughs> "No Better Lot" in your podcast client, and uh, it'll it'll pop up. Your podcast six episodes client. Yeah, you know, what do you use? Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts. You used Stitcher. to work at the you used to work at the Apple store, didn't you? Oh yeah. Do you want me to show you anything <laughs> really quick? <laughs> Hold up your phone. <laughs> Hold up your phone. I'll do a couple things really quick. Genius bar real quick. Yeah, just hit me. <laughs> um so yeah, I I would love for people to listen to that. Uh it's it's uh, pretty near and dear to our hearts. We worked on it. All this stuff takes forever. That's the other thing that they'd never tell you in film school, how long all this stuff takes when right you don't have money and you're kind of like doing everything you can bartering favors just to get somebody to be like, Hey, do you mind doing like a mix for us on this? It won't take very long. Um, <laughs> you know, that turns into eight months and you're like, Oh, sorry. Right. Um, but yeah, everybody who worked on it again, like so fortunate just to have people that dug the project and, and were like kind of into it from, from the get go. So again, feeling very fortunate and lucky to every project feels lucky to come out. So um, yeah. I, I feel like that's a good position to be in and just kind of feel like, okay, cool. We got this out. Um, yeah. But yeah, check it out. No better lot. Search Let in me, your podcasts. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. Also, um, if you uh, if you find me on Instagram or, or something, there's a little link in bio that'll have all this stuff. So cool. you got this. There it is. No better lot. And then this. Oh, my goodness. Well, We'll figure this out. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, man. Don't sweat it. Um, cool. It's also nice that I can't see how many people are watching. Because <laughs> I keep just like being like, hey, we're just talking. But yeah. there's an audience. Well, there's um, a couple people watching. Hey, everyone. Hello. Th thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Jake's, Jake's doing a great thing over here. Christian's killing it. I'm trying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the further it gets along, I'm like, I should be talking about substance. No, it's all substance. Um, tell me about... So dealing with this modernhorrors.com, like mm -hmm. how is that different in terms of distribution? Like what are your experiences as an independent artist um, dealing with that versus origins, which we saw before? Got you. Um, Unless I, hmm. you already kind of covered it. Well, it, it's a little different just because these are, they're such different worlds as far as like the way we get out this media, you know? Right. Um, I mean, teaming with modern horror is like, the great thing is, number one, um, the dude who kind of co-runs the site or co-owns it, I believe, uh, Luke, um, another dude that just like liked it when he heard it and was like, oh, this is cool. It's it's a weird thing because it's not quite horror. It's not quite it's not quite a Western. Um, so it, we're in this weird like space of, well, who is this for um, in terms of marketing? And we, we wanted to kind of play at the horror angle just because we're. Um, kind of drifting that way and some of the stuff we're writing now uh, and are trying to make. Um, so it was a really, really nice partnership just to like, number one, add some credibility to the podcast besides just, hey, Chris, Christian and Hunter put out another thing. You can watch it or not. <laughs> as as with anything of any independent artist knows, right? Yeah. It, it's there if you want it. I don't know. We worked for uh, two years on it, but eh, if you don't want to give it 30 <laughs> minutes, then I guess, you know. It's um, nothing to me. It's nothing to me. <laughs> it's nothing to me. I just, you know, <laughs> I'll just go apologize to my daughter again, I guess. Please, please watch it. So yeah. uh, No Kill Better Law <laughs> on modernhorrors.com. Yeah, so it's on there. And then again, in its own feed now, it's much easier to find in its own feed. That's the only reason I keep 
pushing that. Sure. Um, Modern Horrors has a bunch of other podcasts that you can listen to as well. We're just kind of lower down in their little feed since it's been a while since it came out. Understandable. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, so just, you know, the, the same stuff, trying to get some more ears on it in this case. And, and they did a good job of kind of pumping that out pretty early on just to kind of help us feel like just feel like something besides just yelling into a void you know yeah. which which is the whole bummer about social media like it's great it's great until it's not um obviously there's so many other bad things about social media that we won't even go into right. but as an artist on social media or whatever a filmmaker on social media you know if you don't play the algorithm right uh instagram changes their algorithm every six months it feels like so you know if you don't i forgot what the latest one i read was but it's like you need to have somewhere in there a picture of someone's face because if you don't have a face it doesn't prioritize that to your followers is that the case there's a lot of weird stuff man and i'm not super educated on it but the the crappy thing to be aware of is like even the people that follow like your own friends that would be invested in the thing you make, they might not necessarily ever see that pop up on your Instagram. Um, I, I got rid of the app for a year and then rejoined because of jelly roll. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gives me two pictures and then, and then it's like, okay, here's a bunch of other crap. Like in the same thing is going on with Facebook app too, where it's just like, it's not updating anything. It I don't know what is going on with it. It's uh, yeah. It's not it's very fun strange. though. I, like I want to post more stuff, but it's not. It's not as fun as it seems to. I maybe that's me. Maybe that's the app. No, I I, but, I think you're. At least for me, I, I agree with you. It's just there's something about it now that almost just feels like, like a gross, um, like codependent relationship or something. You know. Yeah, I um I never understand Twitter until I join Twitter for three weeks, and then I'm like, oh, I get this. Not only do I get it, but I'm addicted. This is very mm-hmm. bad. This is bad for my health, and then I <laughs> yeah. get rid of it. And like, I should be tweeting people, and you know, you learn that every single platform is um is a dinosaur compared to Twitter. Like the news just happens so fast. It's yeah. nonstop. It keeps coming, keeps coming. So maybe there's something to it, but I can't stay on there because it gets real. It brings out the worst in me. You yeah. Know? It I mean, makes as, me think as I can... to many people, you know, yeah. that's, that's why we're, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're in well, so many bad situations. You never really think about it, but I'll take accountability for myself. Like after a certain point, I get to thinking like, oh, I'm allowed to just at people and, and without consequence. And everyone knows yeah. that you can't just at people without consequence. There yeah. will always be some sort of consequence. So whenever there's any kind of like any inkling, like this is about to be problematic or I'm about to like, start caring too much or something like that just get rid of it which is it's rough because i would love to have the the news fast you know yeah yeah it's it's such a double-edged sword where i remember like in the big well not in the beginning of twitter because i wasn't on it for a long time either but like Mm -hmm. part of the appeal was like oh you mean i could just tweet at ryan johnson like i can just ask him a question and maybe he'll get back to me. You know, there's always that like fantasy of like, I can interact with like my idols and, and right. these people I respect and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, I think that was the fantasy for a while, but I don't know if that's what's happening or it's just not happening for us. <laughs> and that's yeah. fine. You know, I, I think people that know how to use that system and use it well, like I think the rewards you reap from that are great. It's just, it definitely makes me feel like an old man. The fact that I'm like, I don't know. I, oh, I feel uh, like even the people that I hear or talk to or whatever that do it well, hate it, you know, uh, but uh, like, you but also understand that it's, if right now, if it's still the fastest way to get news, like what, what can I, what can you do? It's, it's just, I don't know. It's uh, YouTube is too slow takes too long to make a video, edit it, upload it, even for these people. Twitch, there's people that Twitch, but it's like gaming usually. Yeah. Um, and then the the news on Twitch ends up getting edited, re-uploaded to YouTube. So 
I mean, I don't know. Not to keep bringing everything back, but that's why I was so excited about this Amazon thing, you know? like I know. Well, it's good. We're, so this is what it's all about. We're, <laughs> we're going back. We're hitting that Amazon train again. I haven't, um, I've talked to Hillary about it, and I haven't been able to talk to other filmmakers as much about it because it's really um, – like it's pissing me off but also it's like yeah it's what we keep balancing every time it's like i so yeah. it's so understandable and also like now what you know how like uh not to like totally divert but i heard you know uh that that my pillow guy just tried to start like a social media uh platform and it crashed and didn't do well and it's like yeah of course because that takes tons of infrastructure and millions and millions and millions of dollars. So like, I, had, my... I did not know about this at all. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't know he tried to start a social, he just tried to start a, a new, yeah, like a new Twitter. I, I believe it's called Frank. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Go something for catchy. Give me something catchy that people will know. <laughs> what do you think? Like Frank? Great. That's my uncle's He's name. like, yeah, it's exactly. He's the guy down at the bar, but also, you won't mince words with you. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> um, but, and then it started crashing. So my answer for all of this is like, always like, well, let, I want to start an independent streaming service. Like just yeah. for like a proper, come on, let's do this thing. Like, let's do it. That's why Prime made so much sense because it was already the DVD bin of the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's fine. Let it be that. That's why I like it. Cause you just yeah. scour, I can scour prime forever. Absolutely. Yeah. Random movies. And it's amazing what, um, will be free. Um, and I, I mean, but they're paying for the real estate and that's yeah, a lot it, of, that's a lot of real estate and that's a lot of money to for sure. and scrapers is an hour 50 for people not to be watching I mean that's it takes it takes a lot. That's it took that movie's an hour fifty. Yeah, dude. Or no, did, it's an hour okay. forty five. Five minutes of credits. It's an so hour it 45. does it does not feel like that to oh, thanks, to though. your very much to your credit. It does not Thank feel you. like it's that long. I'm surprised. That was um, um that was my thing where like I know exactly the fifteen minutes I would cut out right now. Sure. And, we, and, yeah, <laughs> you can't go down that road. And I had already I'll this cut out was, half my career. Right. The first career. cut of that movie was two hours, 20 minutes. And that was so like, it wasn't even fun. It was like, it was a slog and it was just buttermilk, you know, like, so we got it down to uh, playing weight. And I always said the second it was done, I was like, if the biggest problem with this movie is that it's 15 minutes too long, I'll live with it. And for sure. right now, for me, that's the biggest problem with it is that it's just 15 minutes too long. And I know exactly right in the middle where, I, but I just like the scenes. So I don't know. Uh, um, I was just talking to a buddy about, we're, we're trying to shoot a, just kind of a fun, goofy short this summer. Um, and he was saying, he's like, you know, if this is kind of like us all getting back in the groove and, you know, COVID kind of sidelined a bunch of stuff, obviously, um, filmmaking in the world you know but uh he's like if this is kind of like us getting back in the groove and, and like trying to figure out why this is like why does this bring us joy you know why do we keep doing this then let's let's have some fun with this let's make the movie for us first this time yeah and that kind of seems like a good way to to treat it just like well at the end of the day maybe i am just gonna throw this up on amazon prime to get zero viewers over two years or whatever but right you know at least you can be proud of the work you did and yeah you know, there's only so long you can tell yourself that, uh, I feel like, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I feel that the longer I keep doing this, the, the two things that kind of keep circling in my brain are like, okay, I want to be, I want to be proud of the thing and not have to like, look back at it four years later and be like, oof, a little couple sketchy parts here, you know, or whatever. Um, and there's always <laughs> going to be those things, but I also right. think too, is just like, I think the big thing is just like, if we're going to be making movies in the league, we're making these movies, right. You know, just yeah. as dudes making movies, trying to do everything we can to get people to see them. The other thing you could do is just like, just try and grow on each project. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I find myself like the newer stuff we're writing. It's just like, well, we don't really mess around with green screen that much. Like let's, let's throw that in there and try and sure. figure out how we can tweak that and make it something that we'd actually enjoy using. Um, so that seems to be kind of a nice little, I guess this is growing up, as our friends Blink One Eighty Two once said. <laughs> our, you know? our, 
the eponymous Blink-182. Absolutely. Um, yeah, dude. I That's what I've been doing lately, too, with the things I've been writing is um, just challenging myself in terms of like, man, I hate these movies. So how do I write a movie like that so I don't hate it? What is it about a movie that is set entirely in one room for an entire movie that drives me fucking crazy? Uh, unless it's Cube. Yeah. Because Cube, the Cube, well, come the on Cube series is its own podcast. Uh, uh, it, Cubecast, you join Jake and I on Cubecast. Uh, let's start coming here. <laughs> let's do it. I'm, let's already. <laughs> I'm down. Hold on, Cubecast. Hashtag Cubecast. Um, <laughs> is, is Luke still? Can we see? Is Luke still there? Luke, are you still there? If you are, are we being too cynical? <laughs> he's Don't an, ask him, a, Matt. He he's doesn't a, know. <laughs> he's, well, he's another filmmaker, you know? I'm just like, oh, trying to be like, hey, man, how, how we doing? <laughs> Sorry, I just thought you meant in terms of being cynical. I'm like, this guy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just let us know in general. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I, I don't mean to be. I, I no. hope it's not coming across that way. It's just, um, I, I, I just feel like you, you never really hear people like you hear people talk about when they've made it and then that's all well and good but um one of the filmmakers i love listening to interviews of is jim cummings who did um jesus i'm blanking on the title it's amazing thunder road thunder road which is incredible he's had um thunder road he just put out the wolf of snow hollow i love great movie the wolf of snow hollow is a crazy movie that dude he just seems like he's on another level. He's doing great stuff. And he has yeah. a bunch of um, old shorts that you can watch as well that are great. Um, but anytime I listen to an interview with him, uh, if you're interested in filmmaking or are a filmmaker, I highly suggest looking up anything. <laughs> he's given a better interview than I am. Um, <laughs> but he is brutally honest about, like I was saying, about budgets, about how... Oh, thanks, Luke. Sorry. Oh, wait. but Sorry. To... There we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, pal. He, he knows what's up. Um, <laughs> but, we love you. <laughs> uh, James Cummings is always very honest about like, hey, I had a short that uh, won a prize at Sundance. Then right. do you know what happened? Well, I took a bunch of meetings for like three years, and then it was like, okay, well, I guess I just have to go make movies the way I was making them, which is on my own. Um, yeah. So he's a great dude to listen to if you want just like a, a real perspective, uh, especially for somebody that like, I think is very good at what they do. I, I think he's very humble and honest about it. Sure. Uh, that reminds me, one of my favorite stories on working on Origins of Wit and Humor was, um, of course, every time Steve Lemmy was off to the side, there would be a little group of people because we all want to talk to Steve Lemmy from Super. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, but he was talking to some people and I was overhearing. Um, he's like, you know, everyone asks me about the good times, but no one asks me about the bad times. And then he started talking about the bad times and it was beautiful. It was yeah. a really incredible, I, I don't want to take the story from him because he does comedy and stuff and he should really tell the story, but it's the story about their first movie was Puddle Cruiser in 1996, Puddle Cruiser in 1996. Super Troopers didn't come out until 2001. And so when they sold Puddle Cruiser, he was like ready to go. They they sold their movie. They did it. Yeah. Broken Broken Lizards happening, and then four years of nothing, and it was like detrimental. And to hear yeah. him tell the story is, I I mean that movie was shot a while ago, and I still remember that. And I still he was the first person, really ever much of note to be like no one asked like no one asked me about the bad times, and that's the times I would rather talk yeah. about. And that's something I you know as we move on with the show, and I have you back on and we're all more comfortable with the live format i would like to do more of that kind of stuff yeah you know, really yeah. marrying it up you know what i'm saying yeah. hey let me ask you this who are your guys <laughs> who are you guys jake my guys God, this, this really does go fast we're at i know we're isn't that crazy 49 minutes everybody wow yeah usually um, we, go, other, we go over time st- usually okay just, just because yeah, um, whatever it's, it's your it's your world baby i'm just no, i'm just trying to see what else i got of yours um I mean, I'm happy to talk about whatever. I just don't know if there's like things I should be hitting that I'm not, and we're just kind of talking as buddies. No better lot. Oh. Have you seen it? <laughs> Check it out. Wait, I'm always doing the wrong side. <laughs> Same. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> uh, um, I think you want to talk about VHS. I don't know what you want to talk about with that, but I'm happy to 
gush about VHS, or do you not? You want to move past that? No, like, what is it? What is it about VHS? Because very I grew up. Too. I grew up with it. Sure. I, it is very, and I remember distinctly destroying all of my DHSs. Oh no, <laughs> that hurts. Like me. <laughs> we, I know we had boxes and boxes of them. Yeah, and it was time to get rid of them. And I think that was when Mom got the um, the dumpster that was the length of the driveway. <laughs> And we were just time to get rid of everything. We Whipping them in there. Hawked everything in there. So did we say uh, hi to Gigi yet? I I don't know, but this is from earlier today. Oh, Mom, there she is. That's Mom was saying hello. Oh, good. Yeah. I just what a what a delight she is. I just wanted to make sure. I cannot <laughs> like I almost feel like you have to like come on and it's like a godfather thing where you should you should definitely pay respect to Gigi. i you know what i don't think you're the only one who feels that way to be perfectly frank she's the best she's the she best is, she's the queen <laughs> she comes up in this house a lot actually <laughs> really <laughs> well your, your mom's always so sweet you know she uh when i post stuff about her, her daughter or something your mom always has a sweet comment but it's just like you know she's just she's she's in the family <laughs> you're in the family man like you're you might as well be oh, my yeah. brother you know that we are oh. brothers for sure. Well, uh, and so, also, so, uh, your your daughter's name is June, and true. Uh, my mother calls Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yep. And now <laughs> I can't look at your daughter without calling her Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> it works. It works. Why? Why fix it? You know, um, it ain't broke. Uh, so <laughs> Jack's why? watching. Oh, Jack. Hey, Jack. Jack, you can hop on if you want, dude. If you're here, <laughs> he's like, on. nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I'm my day off, man. <laughs> you idiots got nine minutes to get out of here. Um, <laughs> why VHS? Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. That is, uh, of course, it's nostalgia, right? You're just like injecting nostalgia into your arm with that stuff. But, <laughs> you know, just, I mean, it's kind of like vinyl <laughs> without the quality upgrade, you know, that you get from yeah. vinyl. But you want, the, God, what a pretentious thing um <laughs> but you know it's just nice to have something it's nice to have something physical again you know as, as we're talking about streaming services and all this you're not wrong bottomless pits of content that you can flip through until you decide like well it's too late to watch anything anyway i guess i'll go to bed you know there's just right. something about making the choice picking up the box you know checking out the cover not to mention all the great cover art that we're losing you know, I right. feel like now we're we're getting back into a nice thing where people are really caring, or maybe not now, the last few years or something. People really care about their poster out now and their cover art. Um, but I mean, you had artisans doing paintings right. for these covers, you know, for um, police so, academy, for police, for like screwball sex comedies. You had yeah, beautiful right. posters. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. That it's just like you just like kind of feel the care that went into it. And it's nice to interact with something again, I guess. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, uh, that's That's been my thing as well. There's two things about VHS for me. I don't have a VCR. It would probably be dangerous if I did. Although I don't know where they would be selling VHSs around where I live right now. Um, Good will, baby. Probably for the best. Um, but Forget I said that. <laughs> I'll take a look. Uh, yeah. I'll go buy Bugsy. Um, or no, Oscar. I'll buy Oscar starring Sylvester Stallone. That's what there I want to There you go. Say. Um, I've never John even heard Landis. of that film. Oh, my God. It's trash, but it should be on VHS. Um, okay, I'll find it's it. It's John Landis' big return after the Twilight Zone incident. So he really Jesus. drives it down the middle uh, for that one. Uh, God. <laughs> um Th that those movies it, they're so unbelievably specific these cer that you can get these vhs's it's only from these certain years to yeah what until 2004 or something like that and then there's yeah, just no like that, more yeah. of it that being said they did not transfer every vhs digitally they did not fix every single one so there's just like this huge you can really only watch a yeah. handful of movies only on vhs for sure um, yeah and when I lived in Los Angeles and I was very depressed and very broke, I used to go to Amoeba when it was still open. Yeah. And Amoeba had the greatest dollar VHS collection ever. And I would just go there and spend hours in Amoeba to pick out three or four VHSs. And there was something about it where it was just yeah. like, this is 
you know well, that that's part of it too is like that hunt you know you you're you're back on the especially now that you know you're we're trying to find them at goodwill or or whatever half price books right um that's another good spot for vhs if you're looking um but you know it, there's something about that exciting and ooh, amoeba's back baby. i don't even i didn't even know that hey i have a really special thing for us hit me i love special stuff oh jack Jack, oh, Jack. What's up? <laughs> wow. I made it. I get to meet Jack. Hey, Christian. Now hey, we're into overtime. We're yes. going to overtime when Jack comes. So it. this is where I'm like the kid who walks into the middle of a movie <laughs> and asks and pisses off everyone and says, what's going on? What are we watching? I missed Sick. everything that just happened, and I want you to catch me up right now. I am the walrus. <laughs> I am Shut the, the walrus. fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> Jack, I, I, you know, I don't want to sell it short, but I feel like you didn't miss much. <laughs> um, yeah, you're fine, dude. Don't I, worry I mean, <laughs> We're just getting started. I caught you comparing VHS to vinyl and <laughs> heinous. <laughs> just no absolutely I appreciate, not i no, appreciate your honesty no. just uh, I, did, I did want that back that a little bit though you know i did yeah. want that back you're not getting some quality <laughs> bump you're not watching something for you know because it's that it doesn't look said. warmer and crisper you know right no, that's the best it. Brief doesn't look warmer and crisper on vhs <laughs> you know but are you telling me that you would rather watch cool runnings on disney plus than on clean wide box vhs there are a few movies that should be watched on VHS. And Cool Runnings is one of them. <laughs> and yeah, cool Runnings is definitely one of them. Batman right. Forever. Jack, what are your <laughs> thoughts on Jake's thoughts on Twitter? Luke's asking. What are my thoughts on Jake's thoughts on Twitter? Okay, well, uh, I'm a really bad person to ask about this because I have Twitter. I think I've posted six things in the last seven years. Okay. That sounds about right. That's so th about where we're at. That's my opinion of Twitter. I have it. <laughs> I don't care for it. Uh, I think that, it, you know, it's cool in theory that, you know, something happens and you can post it right away. And I guess that's where people can go to get it. But I also think that's kind of, it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, the other, the other thing too is you're posting something and like, you're going to post that and then by the time you even see it, right. it's all the way down here and it doesn't matter. It, like it and already... It, Everything is irrelevant immediately. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's been fact-checked. It doesn't matter who posted it. If it's you, me, or Anderson Cooper, or, you know, Donald Fuckface. Hey. Hey. I, I, we don't, I don't. Think know. of the children. <laughs> the, yeah. the children. On, I don't like the, the guy children. either. Uh, I have a question here from Herelius. How has Christian, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How has Christian dealt with the pandemic as an independent filmmaker? How has his prep changed for the upcoming project? That is a, a great and thoughtful question. Um, let me see. Well, I mean, for the first part of that, how have I dealt with the pandemic as an independent filmmaker? Like, honestly, uh, it was it was pretty dark there for a while. Uh, I won't yeah. lie that it... I mean, the pandemic in general made the things that I was doing kind of feel uh, fruitless um, or just like if I can't do the thing that I've been kind of training for all these years, like what am I doing? And I, I think I probably had a bad reaction to that of kind of pulling away uh, from film a little bit. Um, so how did I deal with it during the pandemic? Not well, but <laughs> I would say the thing I did kind of use from that though was I had no, I have nothing but time to then, well, not nothing but time. I have a child and I'm working, but like <laughs> at night, I have nothing but time for a couple hours. And during that couple hours, I was just watching stuff. So I, I feel like I was generating a lot of ideas at the time. And I, I think maybe to the benefit of the pandemic, that's a gross thing to say, I'm sorry. But like to, for your art, um, I wasn't so much worried about what the end product would be. I was just about what is the idea. Um, and that felt really nice to not um, be cutting, cutting the legs off projects before we were even able to like produce them because producing them wasn't an option. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay, cool. Um, and so how has prep changed for this upcoming project? Um, I think we're just trying to be a lot more um, thoughtful about 
what we can and what we realistically can't do. Um, it's it's not shooting for the moon, I think, with a lot of things that maybe we were trying to do before. It's trying to perfect um, things on a smaller scale. Um, does that kind of answer that a little yeah, bit? I think I'm so. always worried I just sidestep questions. I no, think that but, ties in with just, what you were saying before about, oh, we didn't use green screen this much on the previous projects. Let's do it now. Let's. It, yeah. it ties in with let's what haven't we done before? How is this different? And let's expand our, our muscles up here. Let's try right. to improve on that. And yeah. It, oh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, and it, it, that's a little reaction to the atrophy too, of, of just like, okay, well, like we got to get out there and flex a little bit again. Cause you know, this is not a muscle that you want to dry up, you know? Right. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And it's also so hard to tell what is going on from day to day with all of this. Yes. We're lucky enough if we've gotten some shots, one or two, um, but you know, it's who knows how movies are going to go. I, you know, it costs so much more with masks, with the way yeah. you're going to be making movies now, you know, although yeah. if you have enough of it, then you can do that whole digital dome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thing. We can be in the uh, the danger room uh, together. <laughs> hey, thanks, Luke. That's super nice of you to say. We do have a new, I would say we have a new-ish short. It's new to many, uh, Hypoxia, that's on our website that I would love people to watch. Um, yeah. In addition to listening to Know Better a lot, so you can listen or you can watch something. <laughs> um, so Whatever works. I don't have a guest for next week, so what I was going to do uh, is show some of our work. My work, I was going to show an episode of Clean Sheets. I was going to ask Luke if I could show uh, either Captain's Chair or Close or something that he's worked on. Yeah. Um, maybe Winnie and Charlotte, if we're lucky. Uh, it, would you mind showing hypoxia? I don't want to put you on the spot. I would, no, I would, love, I would love to do that. Whatever you need, you take it. Thanks, baby. Take it, I it's yours. I love that short, and I, I was working on making a trailer, and I was like, I'd rather just show the short, to be honest with you. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, so. I'm, super, I'm super proud of that one. I, I feel like that uh, was a big step up for us in terms of visuals. I, I think I was able to work with our DP in a way that I hadn't uh, on any film that we had done before, and that felt really nice to just kind of like dial in and be like, cool, we can, we can focus on making this look slick as hell. Like, let's yeah. just do it. Well, I'm excited to see that. It's oh, thanks. Game. I think you'll like it, Jack. Yeah. So I can I read you some some VHS titles that I think you'll enjoy, or some titles yes. that I think uh, you'll enjoy to only be enjoyed on VHS. Yeah. <laughs> One thousand. This is a real picture that I saw not two weeks ago, a real thing that I saw. <laughs> oh boy, hang and, on. And had to take a picture Yo, what of up, Mike? it. <laughs> why can't I? Why can't I put hey, the thing on? Oh, there it is. Oh. Hey, yeah, there we go. Here we go. I'm All right, I'm we got Maverick, close, a guy thing, pay it forward, the boost. One true thing, the others. I mean, this is like VHS gold right here. One yes. true thing. You guys remember yeah. one true thing? No, I no. do not. Oh, it's Meryl Streep and, and Renee Zellweger. And let's and see, one there's of them. the end of innocence and murdered innocence. I and see I don't Charlie's know if... Angels in there as well. Is that right? <laughs> Creeping around right under. Yeah, there it the is. 12th, 12th day of Christmas? I, I tried looking that one up and I can't find it. That's a deep cut. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, there. I'm trying to think if I have anything that's like, you know, whatever rare. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> you have rare Nicholas Cage. You have uh, a young at heart or wild at heart poster up behind you. You got to. I just picked up Red Rock West, uh, which is a Nicholas Cage and this oh. Hopper like thriller. Yeah, I haven't um, seen that one, but I know of it. It's fairly solid. I will. I will say. I thought it was a live solid. concert of Dennis Hopper and he performing <laughs> at Red Rocks. <laughs> In Colorado. Just and this word on beautiful. acid. <laughs> beautiful acoustics. I just Nobody hope that he's uh, kind of... the, the blue velvet character. Was that Frank Frank Booth? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Sucking that. Sucking yeah. that ass. There's a blue velvet poster over all these directions on here. I, I, um, <laughs> I just watched uh, this might be like so won't play, but I just watched The Man Who Killed Don Quixote finally. How is after that? 25 oh. years. Uh, good beginning sticks the landing a little rough in the back half. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I, I had to buy Don Quixote because I'm like, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot I'm missing. Um, this might be a little bit more astute than uh, me. Um, but I got all these vibes from Dennis Hopper's last movie. Have you ever seen that? 
No. You guys haven't seen the last movie, his Wait. follow up to Easy Rider? Oh, no, I have. I thought you meant his I... last acting role. No, I know. Yeah, he same. actually made a movie called The Last Movie. No, I haven't seen it. I hear that. it's wacky. It's I've seen The Trip and I've seen gnarly. Easy Rider, but not this one. Well, I have it on bootleg, so maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll play that on the show illegally. Well, and people do that all the time on Twitch, well, right? It's bootleg, right? If you do it Who once, cares? then they'll just send us a cease and desist, right? So It'll, we just won't do iffy, it again. There's some iffy stuff in that movie, so I I do maybe need to do a little uh, cutting around, but um, mm. but uh, I don't know if you guys know it. It's about um, a filmmaker who goes to uh, an indigenous land, and then they uh, start the people of the city start treating him like a god and start treating the film set like it's like they make cameras out of like out of uh bamboo <laughs> and start like walking around and like every day making this fake movie it's a very very strange strange movie and also it was cut one way and then he showed it to the dude who made el topo your boy yeah uh and There's he a movie. was yeah and then that guy <laughs> what's his name again will you refresh me yodorowsky Yodorowsky was like, this movie is so plain Jane mainstream, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so then Dennis Hopper went back and recut the entire movie to make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Awesome. But it's it's one of those movies where like, oh boy, he's really he's really playing himself up. He's a really big deal. Is this <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I don't know if this movie is on YouTube. It's called The Last Movie. Uh, I got it from Planet of Sound in Lincoln Squares. Uh, the one of the better ones. Jack's uh, on it. I can see yeah, him I'm, look, and... I'm looking it up Ooh. to see what I can find. Oh, the podcast. Uh, go to dimestorefilms.com. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, or um, search No Better Lot in uh, whatever podcast uh, thing you use to listen nice. to podcasts, or just and on it, iTunes. Yeah, I think it's it, on SoundCloud as well. SoundCloud as well. Um, nice. And yeah. then, yeah, if you're talking about this podcast, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're three episodes in. This is the third episode. Oh, gotcha. No, gotcha. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm learning. We're this all is learning. episode three. Episode three. Yeah. I know because when I make the introductions, I label them. <laughs> Instead of posting links. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> What's, oh, uh, Maybe canopy. Maybe. That's, that's a thing. It looks like you can watch the last movie on Canopy if you have that. Canopy. K -A -N -O -P -Y. Oh, we're gonna have to make some calls on that one. I guess we gotta look into Canopy, huh? Canopy. <laughs> Christian. What happens sure. when you log in here? <laughs> that's okay, the sure. new that's hmm. the new prime, Canopy. I guess so. I mean Arrow's got a streaming service now that seems no, to they, everybody's no. got one. So yeah. this is one where you can log in with Google or you can log in with Facebook. And those things always sketch me out a little bit. So yeah. I'm not going to recommend. I'm just saying you have the option to watch it on Canopy. Is this a good, a good idea? Is this a bad idea? I'm not going to say one way or another. Yeah, that's, it, it, that's a smart response right there. Yeah, That's how a professional does that right there. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. like a, a politician's response. Yeah. <laughs> Canopy. Canopy. I don't know. It's spelled with a K, so yeah. Okay. You know, so uh, shout out to K's. Canopy? See shout if you get a, can to... get a Canopy sponsorship on the next one, and then I... they'll just kind of gift everybody a... Absolutely can't Canopy wait. is getting a lot of free publicity on this podcast right now we, we need to stop saying their watching. name yeah i don't yeah. i don't i can't i don't care for them <laughs> yeah just put in something else when i ever i cover my mouth just like dub it. over it's movie <laughs> you can you can watch it on vimeo is this I, you can you watch know, the trailer been, on Vimeo. it has been so long you're so funny since we started uh no it's just been i believe this is in reference to jack i've just realized it reminds me of the guy from the simpsons harry Shearer. <laughs> yeah but like harry you were on a good day <laughs> <laughs> like young a young harry sure yeah yeah he spinal like tap a, harry he looks like a candle right now I'm oh sure. well you well because i do the <laughs> i often shave this part of my face so i look just like um uh derek smalls from <laughs> uh spinal tap <laughs> that's a good call you also uh, you have a little bit of a vibe do you watch any uh, we know. skateboarding we know it's uh, not a diss. anything <laughs> 
And he was. I'm sorry. And he like skateboarding at all? Do you do you dabble in any of that? You Hang watch on. any of that? Uh, do I watch skateboarding? Yeah. I, I you know, don't. Video. It doesn't no. matter. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a oh, skater shit. named the Feech, uh, who you kind of have a <laughs> you kind of have a vibe of. No, I, I don't um, watch skateboarding videos. I have roller skates, which I was going to grab down, but <gasps> they're up on a shelf right now, and it's just Good too much for of you, a hassle. <laughs> it's all right. It's crazy. Good for you, Jack. Get your roller skates and put them on. Oh fuck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Forty more minutes of this podcast. Also, for I've, show. <laughs> I've already said fuck like five times, and I've okay. only been here for ten minutes. It's all right. You're our, you're our boy. It's nice to talk to you. I didn't you're expect one, to see you. The host. Yeah. yeah, I was recording an album today. I didn't expect to be here either. This is what a were you? Surprise. What kind of album were you recording? Uh, a couple friends. Of mine, I'm in a band. Um, we're called Space Tenants, like the renters of space. Okay. Ash, get that up there, Jake. <laughs> and uh, it's these two brothers and myself, and this one guy does all the writing, and it's just like all some crazy tunes. Uh, he's got this one called Rummage Vans, which is about um, <laughs> his hometown in Ohio and just the people who go out on trash night with their vans and collect all sorts of stuff VCRs and VHS tapes. <laughs> Uh, uh, vacuum cleaners and all sorts of other things you would you might find nice are you feeling out of that you feeling good about a check yeah we had a really good day we started early today so um my mind is just like whoa sure just kind of in tunnel vision from that naturally Um, it's gotta be a good feeling though playing with people though yeah it it is, and we were in a, a really big space, so we were far apart from each other. Here we oh, go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There's my skates. Oh, those are legit too. Yeah, the quad skates. Dang, good for you, man. <laughs> Thanks. Tearing it up. I was sitting down when I took this picture. This wasn't me falling on my ass. <laughs> I I do enough of that. I don't need to be like, oh, I never do that. Of course, I, I fall will down. take your word for it, Jack. I suppose. What's the... oh? Uh, what are we reading and watching right now? Let's do that. Ooh. Oh, somebody Kristen, else you go, go first. Oh, oh God. Oh, host. Can, I'm putting you on the spot. I can go first. Uh, I just watched a three and a half hour long version of Alexander by, <laughs> by, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I saw it in the theaters. There's a three and a half hour long director's cut. Is on... it any better? <laughs> so much better. Uh, it actually is. <laughs> Uh, oh. I've been on I've been on a on a kick of these directors and their like directors cuts. Um, I believe there's four directors cuts of Alexander. You just can't get it right. This Why? is this is the most because he made one version that was bad in the theaters and then he made another one called the director's cut, which was shorter. But then he was like, you know what? F this. I'm gonna make a third one called the ultimate. Like Alexander revisited the ultimate edition or something where it's every single bit of footage that he had just about. And it plays like a uh, history book, like a kind of a stale history book, but you can tell that they did their, um, they did their research. You they, know? they picked up the highlights from, and, Alexander and Darius and the fights that they had. Well, they didn't. the The extended version doesn't shy away from like the the bisexual stuff too, which they really tried to get rid of a lot hmm. in the theatrical version. And it's just like it's very interesting. It's a I. It took me two nights to watch it. I don't exactly suggest it, but it's also interesting to be like, okay, so this is Oliver Stone doing the Ten Commandments. Like there's an intermission, right? Um, he recut it so that it would play like this old kind of like what is it? A sa- uh, sword, sword and sandal, and sandal. epic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was during a time post Gladiator when everyone's kind of doing their thing, and Troy. he, like, he want right Troy. He wanted to do Alexander, and he he did his version, and it's you know it's something. I gotta give uh, old old. Colin, what's his face? Credit Colin Farrell. He yeah, just looks him. like he's just in pain the entire movie. Mm. Just <laughs> well, so you get a lot. There's a lot of sand there. Oh, right so, much sand. so much sand. It's really bright on his face. That's why he's making that. Just face. lots of mistakes that he made by the end. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's it's good. If you've read the Iliad, Troy is an almost perfect distillation 
of themes in that. I believe that. But there's no gods in that, that movie. Yeah. And they just get rid of all the gods in that movie. Yeah. Which is fine. Sure. What do I know about them? Oh, Luke's quoting me at me. <laughs> this is a line from Scrapers. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Luke. He's using your words against you. Oh, well, what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jack? What are you consuming? Um, so, I, again, uh, once again, I'm behind on my movie watching, but I'm powering through with season three of Ozark. It's great. Um, earlier this year, I was reading some Greek tragedy, so tying in with Alexander and Troy and this other some stuff. Antigone, um, and Antigone, some uh, Oedipus. Uh, not that, but not, Heracles. but you know, the, the neighbors, uh, Aeschylus, uh, wait, that's the guy who wrote the stuff. Um, Iphigenia and Taurus, um, Euphigenia Doubtfire, Euphigenia Doubtfire. Is that what you just said? You're it, reading Iphigenia mm -hmm. in Taurus. Yeah. It's... Oh, woo. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. like a bunch of plays that tie in with the Electra story and not the Marvel Electra, but the Greek uh, Electra. You lost me. Yeah, I know. You... <laughs> Had me. Now I'm done. Nope. <laughs> Shut it down. Jennifer Gardner? No, yeah. the other one. Okay. But she was the Electra, Greek right? one. She was Marvel's okay. Electra. Yes, that Got is you. correct. But I, but I'm talking about the the ancient Greek Electra. Got you. The right one. Yeah. Darius uh, is up. He's telling you. Yeah. I know, right? Uh, Darius, Darius is joining. He's great. joining us on Twitch tonight, which is very. Oh, cool. cool. We got people Thank you, Darius. watching us on all of the platforms, which That's I'm awesome. very pleased. Oh, about. wild! Nice. Um. Cool. So, what about you? What about you, Christian? Um, what VHSs? I, what Dennis Hopper okay. snorting? What okay. Nicholas Cage rimming? Sure. Always watching Dandies. Cage. Always Cage. Always Fox. Always Cage. What is it? All Firefox or Foxfire? Which one did we watch? Foxfire. Foxfire. Great. Yeah, Firefox yeah. is the browser that we're using. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Keep it private, bro. Um, so, th some things I've liked uh, recently. Uh, I'm going back and watching some uh, Yakuza movies that I didn't catch, like when I was cool. kind of going through those movies. So I just watched Youth of the Beast. Uh, I'm really which excited to watch these. So the filmmaker Seijin Suzuki, he uh, he's made a bunch of like really cool movies. Tokyo Drifter was probably like the big big one, um, but he's a guy that just like. And again, like even if you're not super into the story, or if the story is kind of repeating itself, which it kind of does. You can pause that movie every four minutes and the frame and just make a poster out of it. Like right. there's always just something nice. visually very cool and left to center that he's doing. Um, so Youth of the Beast was rad. Um, for horror stuff, I've been watching a bunch of horror stuff. Uh, the Vigil, um, which is like a Jewish uh, horror movie, is okay. I've heard of that. Really, really great. Um, I dug that a lot. The lighting in that is super cool. Uh, it's I think about they do golems, right? Or about Dibbix? Yeah, I I don't know for sure. Christian, I'm no is it about Christian? Is it <laughs> Christian? Yeah, is it about Dibix? No Dibix. Or, is it, or is it about golems? <laughs> I prefer Dibix personally. Same. I'm on Team Dibic right there. <laughs> team Dibic for sure. Hashtag Team Dibic. Uh, what else? I don't know. Do you want anything else? I'm trying to. I'm looking through Letterbox. That's why I'm looking down. I'm sorry. No, I'm but actually like, excited. Have you watched Le Samurai, dude? I've never seen it. Because I remember seeing a part of it, and when you were sending me these Yakuza things, it's it seems like Le Samurai, and maybe this is like the most obvious take on the face of the planet, but I haven't really watched these movies, so yes. I'm sorry. Uh, but I believe Le Samurai is like a French new wave, because yeah. it came out in like uh, 67 or something. Yeah. So they must have watched those movies and been like, I'm going to do this shit, but in France. Which is always yes, that's how I do it. That's pretty cool. Darius yeah, take, a little, take a little taste. You should check out "Ran" by Akira right. Kurosawa. It was Done. storyboarded as a painting and is a samurai version of King Lear. That sounds awesome. Yeah, never I, seen it. I'll watch it. Yeah, I thank need to you. do all of Kurosawa. Like uh, some some month, yeah. I'll do all. That's of a blind Kurosawa. spot for me. I feel yeah. like. Maybe we'll do that. Well, it's either we do Seven Samurai or you and I, when I come up to your place, watch the four-hour Justice League, maybe in black and white. So we'll see. Whatever. Cue it up, brother. Dude, you I'm love ready. it. It's 4-3 black and white, like an old-timey film. <laughs> you know, just like you like. Like the artist. <laughs> you like the artist. 
It's yeah, exactly dog. like the artist. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> is that dog in it? I love that dog. dog it's a great dog. Plays Superman's dog. It's a oh, good perfect. film. No, the dog plays Jimmy Olsen. Oh, <gasps> if you watch the extended version of BVS, you'd know that Jimmy Olsen will not be in this film. I oh, have not spoiler. seen the extended version of BVS, so now you've just crushed my hopes of seeing. God damn and it! It keeps because guys, of you. I never will. <laughs> and what I'm am a mess I over on here. VHS? Hang What's on, I have to do something off screen on? for a second. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna have to check. I'll just take you off, pal. <laughs> we're gonna wrap it up pretty soon here. Now we'll bring Jack That's back. Really cool. Okay. I haven't done the thing yet. Oh, you haven't done the thing yet. <laughs> You're off. <laughs> What are you putting the man on the spot? He's doing something. <laughs> what are you? Huh? Jack? They're, they're all rules. <laughs> Do this. This is anarchy at this point. It's anarchy. This is for all the right. real fans. This let's is the people that stuck around. Let's ra uh, wrap this baby up, shall we? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, Jack's back. I'm here. What, <laughs> what is the final word that we are leaving on? I'm so... I love you. <laughs> I, I guess, love you guys. Um, Christian. No, I was just going to say thanks for having me. This is like the life. I'll talk to you any day of the week. You know, this is just, I appreciate you having me on and let me chat and plug some stuff. It's nice to meet Jack. Yeah. I, see your face. I'm looking forward to getting to chat with you more and seeing you more next time so that we have more of a conversation that I'm with you on it and I'm just, not just crashing the party. For sure. We'll do it. We'll do it in the future. Whenever you want to have another idiot like me on, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm a perfect we'll, idiot for that. <laughs> we'll have you on really, really soon. Yeah, I man. really appreciate this. Thanks for staying. No, thanks for having me. Thanks for staying overtime with us and just yeah. uh, jawing here. Thanks for uh, everybody who watched and sent in stuff, too. That's super sweet just to yeah. see people interacting. And yeah. I think you guys are doing an, an awesome thing with the show. Jake, I will also say, not to like gas you up even more, but like I think you're doing super interesting things with twitch and just like how you're using twitch to like kind of hold yourself accountable for writing but also make that like a process that everybody can watch i, I think that's super uh Thank super you. cool so it's, keep uh, keep doing weird stuff on there, man. Yeah, I gotta Love get you, back Gigi. on there. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sticking overtime too. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for watching and staying with us. Yeah. So again, next week we'll do a shorts program. Uh, me and Jack will be here. Maybe we'll have some special guests. I don't know. And uh, until then, I really appreciate everyone hanging out, spending the time with us. This has been too much fun, guys. Too, too much. much fun. I got to go right. take a nap. It was that much fun. <laughs> I'm so jacked up on coffee. It ain't happening. I'm not <laughs> sleeping tonight. I'm wired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, babies. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you later. Love you, fellas. Thanks for your time. Bye. Bye. I just think they're neat. <laughs> Kids, turn off the TV. Always with the smooth talk. Your Uncle Arthur used to have a saying. Shoot them all and let God sort them out. <laughs> I just think they're neat. Honey, you should listen to your heart and not the voices in your head. Like a certain uncle did one gray December morn. At times like this, I guess all you can do is laugh. <laughs> now let's forget our troubles with a big bowl of strawberry ice cream. I just think they're neat. <laughs>